The bookstore is crowded with students combing the shelves for whatever required reading they have for the semester. At the front of the store, two long lines of students stretch out in front of the cash registers. Adam and I wind our way through the crowd, seeking out our own books. General physics, calc one, literature genres and archetypes. I pick up all the used books I can find, but the price is already stacking up along with the weight of the books in my arms. This is going to cost us several hundred dollars by the time I'm done. I take my spot in one of the lines and wait patiently as the line slowly inches forward. My pocket hums and I pull out my phone. That's weird, mom hates calling. It must be important. Honey, your dad's dead! <laughs> I size up the- <laughs> I size up- Coincidentally enough! <laughs> oh, you're joking! You're Read joking. the line! I size up the long line of students in front of me and the single harried cashier at the checkout counter. I've got time. Yes? Oh, honey. I'm so sorry. Her voice sounds strained. What's wrong? What happened? Mom takes a deep breath. It sounds like she's trying to calm herself. Your father is in the emergency fuck? room right now. What? What? What happened? My voice cracks. He collapsed at work. They don't know why yet, but... Mom's voice trails off. She seems hesitant to say any more, but I can guess what she's thinking. It's expensive, isn't it? It's one test after another right now. Insurance only covers oh, part of it, no. and he won't be able to work for a while. The books in my arms suddenly feel a lot heavier. How much am I about to spend? Is it really worth it? Mom seems to read my thoughts. It's okay, honey. I can ask for extra hours at work. Maybe request holidays. Should I come home? Maybe I can help. No, no, you shouldn't. She sighs. To be honest, I didn't even want to tell you. What? Why? I was afraid you'd worry too much and you wouldn't be able to focus on your studies. Mom, this is Dad we're talking about. I deserve to know. I know. That's why I'm telling you. Her voice keeps sounding fainter and fainter. Mom, get some rest. I will. No, I'm serious. You can't both be sick right now. Yes, you're right. The two of us remain silent for a moment. Don't worry, Sean. We'll find a way to make it work. Just do your best, okay? It's okay. I promise I'll help. We're a family. We'll make it through together. I know, honey. Another pause. I... I suppose I should let you go. Yeah, I guess. I love you, Mom. I love you too, Sean. As I tuck my phone away, I realize that I'm nearly at the front of the line. Around me, students are chatting excitedly about today's classes, or planning for tonight, but it all sounds like a dull humming to me. I stare at the books in my arms. Maybe I can find a classmate and borrow his or her books. Adam runs up to me, a huge smile on his face. Sean, you're not going to believe this. This girl actually got a tattoo of... He stops dead in his tracks. Whoa, what's wrong? Nothing. Adam frowns and pokes my cheek. You're really going to just lie like that? Tell me. It's just... Mom called. Dad's in the emergency room. He collapsed at work and they don't know why. What? Is he okay? I don't know. We don't know anything yet. But everything they're doing is expensive, and insurance won't cover it, and he can't work, and... and... I bite my lip. I refuse to cry in front of all these people. Hey, you gonna buy that, or what? Really, dude? You fucking asshole. I look up to see that I'm currently in the front of the line. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I rush forward and dump my books on the counter. The cashier rolls his eyes and starts scanning my books. 
<sighs> Freshman. I'm gonna have a word with your manager, buddy. I'm yup, 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 yup. He mutters just loud enough for me to hear. Boy, shut up, guy. She's got a lot on her mind right now. Uh-huh. They don't really pay me enough to care. They're not gonna pay Do you at pay all you soon. Jerk, yeah, really. Or are you always like this? The cashier ignores him and hits a button on his register. The to total cost of all the books flashes on the screen. My eyes widen. Oh. As I fumble with my wallet, Adam steps in front of me. I've got it. He pulls out his wallet and hands a card to the cashier. The cashier swipes it before I can pro pro protest. He shoves my books into a plastic bag and hands it over to me with a bored look on his face. Must be nice having a sugar daddy. I'm gonna punch oh you! Oh my god! I will kill him! Adam looks like he's about to snap at him, but I place my hand on his arm and shake my head. As we head to the door, Adam takes a deep breath. As soon as we're out of hearing distance, he growls. I'm really in the mood to punch something right now. Me too! Yeah! I smile weakly. Watch yourself. You'll wind up in the tabloids if you have an angry outburst in public. What, I'm not allowed to have emotions about things? Maybe he's having a bad day. Dealing with a line this long on his own must be tough. I'd be upset if I were stuck with that job. And speaking of jobs, I think I should get one. <coughs> Adam's expression softens. I can help, you know, with school expenses and stuff. Thanks, but I really need to do this on my own. Adam eyes me carefully. Now's not really the time to be stubborn. It's not about being stubborn. It's about priorities and your money. I make plenty of money. I hate to have to be the one to remind you, but you've only kept enough for your own tuition. I can't ask you to stop donating to charity just to pay for my bills. It wouldn't feel right. Adam looks like he wants to protest, but my phone beeps. I know that I've indicating that I've set my alarm. I pull it out and glance at the calendar. Oh, I completely forgot. I have a meeting with my advisor today. Advisor? Yeah, since I missed orientation, I'm going to speak with him now. Oh, I guess I should schedule one of those meetings then. That would be advisable, yes. Huh, <laughs> advisable. <laughs> that wasn't ah, on purpose. Ah, he gets me! <laughs> he gets me! <laughs> anyway, I gotta go. I'll see you later. Are you sure you'll be okay? Do you want me to come with you? I'm sorry, I just... Could I have this time to myself? Sure, whatever you want. I arrive at the classroom and tentatively knock on the door. A decisive voice rings out. Come in. Oh shit, this guy. I open the door, but slowly reveal an empty classroom. It feels a lot bigger without all the people in it. My advisor is standing near a desk, piled high with papers. Well, I finally get to see Professor Cobalt up close. I'm not sure where Dad got the idea he's a hitman. Sean Gooden, yes? Have a seat. On the desk in front of me sits a tiny Zen garden with a little rake. Wow. Next to it sits a plastic frog on a wooden puzzle cube. He points to a small plastic box filled with coins. Coins from around the world. They're from students who've studied abroad. I see. First, am I pronouncing your name correctly? Oh, I nod. At least he asks. Excellent. It's, there mean, are so yes, many it's, unusual that's a good names. thing. I always worry that I'm saying something insulting in one Oh, he's a nice tongue. person. What's wrong with our dad? <laughs> Of course, I find my name to be wholly commonplace, oh. but in other places, it mm. must be rather exotic. Mm. He chuckles quietly at his joke. How are you liking your first day? It's been fine so far, different from what I'm used to. College is like that. Are you enjoying yourself? Yes, of course. You don't have to say that for my sake. I won't be offended. 
It's my job to help you have the best college experience possible. Wow, I wish my advisors were like that. <laughs> it's not that, sir. I'm just a bit uh, distracted. I hope it's not too rude of me to ask what's on your mind. Well, I'm not sure if I should be saying this, but I just found out that my dad won't be able to work for a while, so expenses are going to be tight. I was wondering if it was okay if I got a job. Ah, I see. Professor Koval digs through the piles of papers on his desk and pulls out a yellow sheet. It's not uncommon for students to hold jobs, and you don't need the school's approval to get one. He hands me the sheet. But you might be interested in this. It's a grant application for students with financial <laughs> needs. Your current situation sounds like it might count. If you're approved, the school will lower your tuition as long as you maintain a C grade or higher. Really? Tuition is expensive, and we know it, but we don't want to turn away someone who wants to learn. I look at the sheet in my hands. Everything looks fairly straightforward. Thank you, sir. Don't thank me. It's my job. I'm still grateful. Professor Koval waits for me to look over the sheet before he speaks. Have you thought about a major for yourself yet? No. Honestly, I have no clue what I want to major in at all. There's no rush to decide immediately, but you should keep it in mind as you take your classes. Yes, thanks. Very well. That's all I wanted to talk about. You can bring that form back to me or drop it in the office mailbox. I'll do that. Thank you very much. Take care, Sean. As I walk back to my dorm, I feel a little lighter already. If I can get this grant, that'll be a huge help. Yep. I'll still have to get a job, but I'm sure I can, I'll can. i be able to find something. I fold the form up and stick it in my pocket. As I do, my hand brushes against the playing card that Benito gave me. I pull it out and look at his number. He never said whether or not it was a paying job, but it couldn't hurt to ask. I punch his number into my phone and send him a text asking if he's still interested in working with me. My phone buzzes a few seconds later. These aren't voiced. Oh, let's talk. Oh, let's talk. I'm still on the campus near where we met. Come see me. That's not my voice either. <laughs> I don't see Benito anywhere, but the crowd of people gasping in surprise in the corner gives me a pretty good idea of where he is. I hear a round of applause, followed by the sound of coins clinking. Clink, 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 clink. As the crowd disperses, I see Benito counting out coins and a few odd dollar bills. Dollar dollar bills, like y'all. set for dinner tonight. Not sure if he's joking or not, I simply nod in response. I'm glad you came. I didn't think you'd actually accept. About that. I fidget a little. I'm not sure how to ask without being completely rude. I haven't <laughs> decided yet whether I want to be a plant, I mean. <laughs> I want to be a plant! No, yeah? <laughs> well, what do I need to do to convince you? He sounds serious, as if he's discussing a business proposition. Uh, the thing is, I need money, and I feel like such a terrible person for asking you. I see. Ah. Uh. He pulls a quarter out from the pile of coins he collected and idly rolls it back and forth on the back of his knuckles. After a few seconds, he nods. I'm afraid that I don't have much money to offer, but I'm currently in the talks for a TV special right now. If it comes through, that'll pay pretty well. Oh, that would help a lot. He eyes me searchingly. His fingers move quickly, flipping the quarter back and forth on the back of his hand with increasing speed. What happened? What? Something happened to you after we met this morning. What's wrong? N nothing's wrong. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's still me, fuck. He flips the coin into the air and catches it in a tight fist. Don't try to hide it. 
It's my job to read people, and right now it's clear as day to me that you're in pain. It's just, uh, trouble at home. And now you need money? Yeah. He uncurls his fingers to reveal nothing but air, where the coin once was. See? That wasn't so hard, was it? Huh? Well, the TV deal is still a ways off, but if you really are strapped for cash, why don't you start a blog? A blog? It's no cash cow, but it's better than nothing. You'd have to update it regularly, though. But what would I even write about? I don't know. What's your area of expertise? Uh, makeup. Makeup! He raises an eyebrow. Hey, you don't have to look at me like that. How am I supposed to look? You're not even wearing any makeup, and yet that's your area of expertise? Oh, Benito the Blunt Man. My mom's a professional makeup artist. I've been learning from her and working as her assistant for years. But it's not just for me. I mean, you already pointed out I don't like being noticed. So I've always tried to avoid wearing makeup. It just makes me feel weird. And yet you're a professional makeup artist? It's an art. If someone else wants to hang my art in their house, that doesn't mean I have to hang my own art in my house, too. You have a fascinating outlook on things. Fascinating? To me, at least. I hope I'll get to study you more sometime. What? <laughs> what? Same. What? <laughs> the front door of a nearby building opens and a small group of students exit. Benita looks over them quickly. Sorry to cut things short, but I have to get back to work. If I'm lucky, I'll be able to upgrade tonight's dinner to a medium combo. Stay in touch, okay? I nod and he bounds off like a child toward the crowd. I stand for a minute and watch him. The serious expression he had a minute ago is gone, replaced by a youthful grin. <coughs> How old is this guy anyway? I should probably should have asked him and what's the deal with studying? At least I may be getting a job, and maybe a job is better than nothing. For now, I should probably leave him to his work. This is my first time really getting a good look at my room. I was so tired last night, I just crawled into bed. And I was running late this morning. Alright, this is, there's no way this is a fucking college dorm room. That bed is a two-person bed. At least it looks like it from this angle. It might actually be a one-person. I might be wrong, sorry. But that room is still way too big. Unless she's in one of the rich people rooms and has a roommate. Uh. Anyway. What? Um, I can't tell how big the bed is. Well, comparing it to the size of the desk, I'd say it's probably a one person. Oh, you're fucking right. God damn it. <laughs> it looks so much bigger. I mean, anyway, that's about I the size of my bed room that my dorm room when I was in sophomore year. Is it? Well, um, here's the thing. I'm also imagining, like, space on the other... Well, first of all, we don't see the other bed, if there is another bed. There's no way she has a room by herself. Why not? Okay, well, at least at my college, you don't <laughs> get single rooms. <laughs> you did at my college. I had single rooms the whole time. Well, my college has a million fucking students, so no one gets their own room. You're also in the middle I, I of New York City I where don't... space is at a premium. Yeah, I literally, well, like, I also, I lived in a dormitory once that had six people in a suite, and it was two people per bedroom. And the most space was, like, the common area, so. And even then, usually it's way smaller than that, but that's because it had six people. Four of which were really fucking annoying. Anyway, I walked through the room slowly, taking time to appreciate each of the decorations. My parents really were meticulous about getting this place to look like my bedroom back home. On the wall hangs a poster from a game I played as a child. I won the poster in a contest when I was 12, and I never had the heart to take it down as I grew up. So I put it in my college bedroom. Now it's even here in college with me. Well, I was her, ahead of my own line. Her parents did decorate it for her while she was on the tour. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that already. I traced the outline of the logo with my finger. 
Wouldn't it be nice if I could just go out and hack at a few monsters until I earned enough money to pay for college? I pull out the form that Professor Kovalt gave me earlier today and seat myself at the desk. Financial need, huh? He said that my situation probably counted. Here's hoping it definitely counts. I fill out the form carefully and tuck it away in my backpack. All right, what's next? Homework. Right. Ugh, don't remind me. <laughs> I eye my bed longingly. Sleep would be glorious right now, but I don't want to fall behind on homework on the first day. Besides, Adam has another show tomorrow, so I won't have any time to make it up tomorrow night. I thought the tour was over, or he just he's just doing, like, random shows now. I think Besides, the, the tour is over, but he's probably still doing concerts around the area. I guess that makes sense. With a sigh, I lift the first tome and begin my homework. Thankfully, most of the work is review, so it doesn't take me too long to finish it all. It's not even midnight yet. Not bad for a first day. I quickly get ready for sleep and throw myself into bed. Sleep time! Alright, there's no way she fucking got done that, pa that paper about, like, Greek playwright shit. Whatever. <laughs> Oh, wait, no, that was one page. I guess you could. All right, never mind then. I roll over to turn off the light, but I notice there's an envelope on the nightstand with my name on it. An envelope? An envelope. I cut it. Who fucking uses... Who uses scissors to open envelopes? <laughs> just rip it open. You just rip it open, girl! I cut it open with a pair of scissors and pull out the note. Dear, S is Sean? Sean, right? Yeah. Okay. Dear Sean, you're about to have start a great adventure in your life. We're both so proud of you for having come this far already, and we know you'll do wonderfully in college. Missing you already, Mom and Dad. P.S. Dad's in the hospital. It sucks. <laughs> P.S. <laughs> <laughs> Treat yourself. Treat yourself to something nice. You deserve it. A $50 bill! <laughs> Pulls out of the envelope to the ground. Oh, shit, dog, give me that. <laughs> All the emotions I've been holding back today suddenly burst through, and I feel my eyes welling up with tears. <laughs> I swear to fucking God, I'm gonna <laughs> say that. Stupid. You guys can't be so flippant with your money. Send it back home! <laughs> I actually, that's probably what I would do in that situation. I would feel so bad I'd send it back home. <laughs> Even though my mom called this morning, it feels like this note was written an eon ago. I reach out and pluck the bill from the ground. I can't spend this. Not now. I tuck it back into the envelope and stash it in the back drawer on my nightstand. I curl up in my bed and pull the covers over me but I can't stop my tears. They flow slowly, burning my cheeks and soaking my pillow. I don't remember falling asleep, but somehow I do.